Houston last summer, while the basketball world reacted with shock, awe and frustration when the Golden State Warriors signed DeMarcus Cousins, it was easy to miss just what sort of gamble was being taken. Not just a wager that Cousins would get and stay healthy, ultimately, he wasn't able to, but because signing him meant the Warriors had largely spent the free agency dollars in one move. They'd had visions of remaking the bench with David West retiring and Nick Young, JaVale McGee and Patrick McCaw among those leaving. But left with nothing but minimum salary dollars to offer, it really didn't happen. Now deep in the NBA playoffs, Warriors vs. Rockets Game 4, Monday 9.30pm. ET, TNT, those choices have left him uncomfortably thin. 0.2019 NBA playoffs. Find everything you need to know about the playoffs here. Schedules, matchups, and more experts' picks for second round. Forecast why entire NBA is watching the East semis. Low differences define Rockets. Warriors. Warriors coach Steve Kerr has never ridden his front line like he has so far in their intense series with the Houston Rockets, stretching stars to the limits. His starters are all averaging more than 35 minutes, with Kevin Durant, Clee Thompson and Draymond Green each averaging over 40. Stephen Curry probably would be there, too, but foul trouble in all three games has sent him to the bench frequently. Granted, overtime in Game 3 forced everyone's hand and has skewed the numbers a little. But Durant has spent only 12 total minutes on the bench in the first three games, averaging a stunning 45.6 minutes thus far. Andre Aguadala, promoted into the starting lineup this series for matchup purposes, is averaging nearly 36 minutes. He played more than 30 minutes only three times during the entire regular season. In Game 3, the overtime pushed him to 40 minutes on the floor, the first time he has reached that mark since December 2016. Those extra minutes are taxing. Aguidala has often been the primary defender on James Harden and his energy zapping isolation plays, fatigue doesn't matter, you have to play, Kerr said Sunday. You've got to do what you have to do to win the game. Our guys are in great shape and we've got a day's rest before game four on Monday, that sentiment is probably a front, Kerr certainly has to be worried about the mounting court time. Yet he was left with little choice in the second half of Game 3 as his reserves were rooted in the first half, especially when he went deeper to Jonas Jerebko and Andrew Bogut. Cousins is out because of a thigh injury. And with Aguadala, who has become so used to being a bench player that his memoir due out in a few weeks is titled, Sixth Man, in the starting lineup, it has fallen to Sean Livingston and Kevin Looney to be the first players off the bench. Looney is minus 10 for the series and Livingston is minus 15 over the past two games. It's not hard to figure why Kerr has had to rely so heavily on his starters. We're not going to be playing a lot of guys, Kerr said. This is a tough series to go deep into your bench because they've got three guards that can get to the rim and they put a lot of pressure on you. The Rockets feel the same pressure. For example, even with the constant concern about protecting Chris Paul from overwork because he tends to be susceptible to hamstring injuries, coach Mike D'Antoni is playing Paul an average of 40 minutes a night in the series. That's a big jump from his season average of 32, in terms of depth, though, the Warriors lag behind the Rockets, and it has shown in the bench production. It's true that bench players tend to perform better at home than on the road, but the Rockets' reserves outscored the Warriors 21-7 in Game 3, it's only getting tougher. For the rest of the series, there are no more extended breaks, the teams will play every other day until someone gets to four wins. And the travel is about to ramp up, as the teams will fly after every game the rest of the way. The Hoop Collective podcast Brian Windhorst and guests chat about Sixers' inconsistency, a critical game for for Boston, the Warriors and more. Listen now, Golden State had hoped to be able to add to the roster via the buyout market during the season, something the Rockets did effectively by landing Austin Rivers and Kenneth Ferrid. But it didn't materialize for the Warriors, as some available players, fearing a limited role, signed elsewhere. Others never became available. For example, they'd had their eyes on Chicago Bulls center Robin Lopez for months, but Lopez didn't get bought out. Instead the Warriors signed Bogut, who has only been able to help in short bursts. The Rockets are already finding ways to add to the Warriors' workload.
After Green was so effective in games 1 and 2 at defending at center, Houston spread its pick-and-roll game out more in game 3 to force Green to expend more energy and cover more ground. Over time, adjustments like those could have a wearing effect. Green is averaging 10 more minutes a game in this series than he did during the regular season and playing almost all of those minutes at center. Thank God Shaq O'Neal isn't in this series, Green joked on Sunday. Still up 2-1 to one and feeling good about the chances, the Warriors are putting a good face on the situation. But if there's a way the two-time defending Shams are showing vulnerability, it's with these mounting minutes. Even if it doesn't get them this series, the risk of injury and the long-term effects of such minutes are undeniable. For a team that frequently looks invincible, this is a weak spot in the playoffs. It's a completely different mindset, Green said. We have more than enough to win it all.